Hello, this is Steve from Beto's Leatherworks. Today's projects are beautiful floor shine shoes. Now we've got the 605 Concord, which is about approximately 1969. We've got the 625, late 80s, I would say. We've got 612, which is the black shell, again, late 60s. We've got the 605, which is the shell number eight, I would say about mid 80s. Again, same with the number eight. Then we've got 602s. And then we've got a pair of 631s, which are your golden harvests. All right, so basically we're going to tear them down. Every job is different, and I'll go through it to see what's what. A um, couple of them are a pretty big process. You've got to assemble everything to the all the way to underneath the lining, to the heel counters, to the toe puffs. So it's going to be a nice project for today. All right, let's get started. Let me show you guys a cool detail on this Concord here. Now, most of the shoes that you see out there, you've got the outer shell and you've got the lining inside and they're stitched together right on top. It's called the top stitch right there, top line stitch. Okay. With this one here, there is no stitch. So basically it was just, it was made was stitched under folded over like this and laid it on to the shoe it's a really cool detail but the problem is that if you have an issue with the heel counter like this gentleman has it's loose and it's squeaking there's no way of accessing the back there because you can't unstitch this if you unstitch it then you have to put a top stitch on there securing these two together so unfortunately, we're going to remove everything from the bottom, go in the back of the heel counter from the bottom of the shoe, which makes it a little bit time consuming to do to get to the problem area. And then once we do that, we'll put new welts, new everything, and bring it back, bring it back to almost like a new shoe once it gets done. This is a beautiful shoe. I love these shoes. Now this particular pair, somebody put a thin rubber heel on top of the suicide heel. Had a double V cleat. Look at all those nails, man. Good God almighty. No wonder they called it suicide heels. Jeez. I'm supposed to save the V cleats here. Customer said save it for him. So we're gonna save it. Oh my god. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 40, 42, 44, 46, 48, 50, 52, 54, 56, oh my God, 56, 58, 60, 62, 64, man, 66, 68, 70, 72, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, and the V cleat, 79 nails on one heel. Oh my goodness. All right, so let's save these V cleats. I'm not sure what he, why he wants to save the V cleats, but it doesn't matter. He wants to save them, and then we'll save it for him. Goodness gracious, man. Now, see, even with the floor shine, and we, you know, I, I, this is my favorite shoe. It's really, it's a really cool shoe, but in some areas that they did cut corners a little bit, for example, in the heel bases, you rarely see a full stack leather heel base. Um, usually it's fiberboard uh, or plastic. In the later years, it's plastic. This is fiberboard. Now, this is a leather piece here, the top piece, but that's fiberboard. So that'll show you even the even the older older you know quality shoes. There are some areas that they did cut corners on, unfortunately. Here's another cool detail for you guys. This is a, uh, basically it's like a, like a nylon cloth 
or canvas. I think it's canvas. Now they put this between the two leathers here, right? The sole and the midsole. So there's no chance of it squeaking as it bends. It's really cool. I do that with my floor shimes too. Now it does have a leather midsole. None of this is going to get used again because we're going to put an all new welt. New midsoles, new cork, new shank, new leather covered. It's a pretty small, pretty small, uh, whatchamacallit, shank. We're going to put the three rib shank. And again, this is fiberboard they used. This is an interesting detail on this pair. There's two rows of stitching on the welt. An old pair and a new pair, but only one set of stitches go all the way through to hold the welt in. You see this? This is the old stitch right there. Th th I've never seen this before. Was this particular pair um, rebuilt by the manufacturer? Because this is not a repairman's stitching. This is a chain stitch. Only a Goodyear welted machine that stitches the welt on will have this kind of a stitch. This is very interesting. Wow, it's pretty cool. There's all your second stitches right there. The white and the beige are the new ones. Never seen that before. It's kind of crowded and crowding the, the gemming right there, but Seems to be still in pretty good shape after all these years. All right, so check this out. So we've got this apart, right? Remember how I was telling you guys how there's no top stitch there? You'd have to access it from the, from the bottom right there. So I can pull that away like that. And here's the heel counter, which seems to be in pretty good shape. We're going to glue that, glue everything back together so there's no squeaking. Now, let me show you guys another detail. This is pretty cool. Now, most of the time, whenever you've got a footbed, you've got a footbed and you've got a, this would be a regular footbed. You've got a piece of gemming, which is this fabric right here, glued on, and the uppers come and get stitched with the welt, okay? Look at this detail. This is incredible detail. You may ask, what the hell are you looking at, Steve? They took the footbed, they sliced the edge, and lifted it up, and then did the same thing on the inside and lifted it up. So now this becomes like a leather gemming. On top of that, they put the canvas gemming next to it. This is this is incredible detail for a 60... 60, 50, 60 year old shoe. Uh, you can see some of some of the you know floor shimes, they do have different different levels of quality. And this one is by none top of the top of the line. The footbed's still in great shape. I'm not replacing this. However, some of these areas are kind of broken up. You see there? That area is missing that leather piece, so I'm gonna I'm gonna have to sand this flush and attach my gimming to it like a regular, because I don't think that there's not much here to salvage. If I put this back together, I'm not sure if it's gonna hold or not. So we're gonna have to change it around just a little bit. Very very cool. I am very very impressed at this detail. All right, let's continue. All right, so we've got the heel counter in. Secure that pretty well. Now this piece here is a basically like a nylon, very thin nylon. I reinforce the back to give it, to give it some strength. And then once we glue the lining back down, that'll be a nice solid back area there where it's not going to squeak anymore. And we'll condition the hell out of the lining. 
and then start reassembling. All right, so we've got this pair ready. Place the gimming, stitch the temporary. Now this pair here, we're not gonna do that much drastic repair. We're gonna do full soles and heels, leather midsoles. The welt is gonna remain the same. Now this particular one had the fiberboard heel base, okay? This has the fiberglass shank. Some of them come like that. Some of them come with metal, with fiberboard. All right. All righty, all righty. We are making progress. So majority of floor shops I do, we upgrade to three ribbed shank. Once that, put, once that is put on in the midsection here, I like to put leather. I think you have a better foundation with this um, with the leather rather than you do with cork now the front part we can do we can do we can do cork no problem so all of the all of them will get um We'll get the leather midsection and the cork front part. So this is basically um, the basic floor shine repair, restoration. You don't have to ask for it, I do it automatically. Now, let's get to these shell cordoba ones, the black ones. Now, this is uh, all apart also. This had the metal with the fiberboard. Now, what we're going to do here, we're going to, this is pretty dirty actually. We'll clean all that up. These are the three pairs I believe it belong to one person. The French binding here needs to be replaced all the way from one end all the way to the other. All right, so we've got one shoe part basically that piece right here that's called the french binding that goes all the way around to the other side now these are called blind eyelets the eyelets are usually on the lining i took those out also because i want to replace them i might as well since i've got them apart and clean the uppers as best as i could from what it was A lot cleaner now so there's a, there was a white film on there that we just kind of scraped scraped it off I don't know if you guys can see that or not I used a little bit of acetone to wipe all that down so let me show you guys a little detail right here it looks like it's just two large stitches it isn't holding on to anything it's just there for looks. See that? I'll show you on the other one. Right there. I have no idea what that's for. I don't know what they were thinking. It was just it's just stitching on the on the piece right there and not really 
not really stitched to anything. It's just there for style. So we'll just duplicate that. We'll just hand stitch that before we close all that in. So this is called, this is what's called the French binding. See this small little piece right here? It gets stitched on the edge and it gets turned over like that. And then the lining comes on next to it. Stitches the lining, a nice finished edge there. Unfortunately, this is not leather. This is some sort of, um, fabric with a dye coat on the surface always always the back of the heel starts breaking down and starts falling apart so the proper way to do to replace this is as you can see you've got to unstitch the whole lining just to get to that french binding area all right let's continue we've got some scratches at the toe here so we're going to do, we're going to take an old sandpaper and gently sand that. And people often get, um, they get afraid of working on shell cordovan. Can send, you can sand shell. I don't know if you guys can see that that scratch right there. It's, it's pretty deep, so I don't want to go. I don't want to go too deep sanding it. But we'll make it look better than what it was. I always say it's going to be presentable. It's not going to be brand new. So we've got this uh, golden harvest. I mean, everything's got to be replaced other than the uppers. We're talking about new footbeds. We're going to make this a little wider. French binding all the way. Clean the uppers to re-dye them to that mustard hue. New welt, obviously. New uh, new midsoles, new JR soles, heel base, blah, blah, blah. So this one, this particular one is going to get... It's going to go back to the customer once I semi-put it together for a fitting. Make sure that it fits them good before we go ahead and finish everything up unfortunately with footbeds you know the customer's not here even though we take you know measurements and uh, precautions making sure that the sizing is going to fit you know we do have issues sometimes so this way when it gets half done we can um, get a nice fitting let the customer try it on and give us some feedback if we need to adjust something, we you know we can do that before we put the finishing touches on it. But this is going to be a complete transformation. It's going to look nice once it gets done. Stay tuned. Let's continue. All right, we are back with these golden harvests. Now, this is a pretty extensive restoration. So we have to replace the heel counter. Now, remember on the other one, the heel counter was leather. This is fireboard. We replaced the back part of the heel lining. We put a top line structural support. See that white piece there? That gives it basically a good structure so it doesn't lose the shape. Now we're going to work on, actually we're going to, I think we're going to work on the color before we put the French binding on. So as you can see, we are getting there. Let's continue. Okay, right 
right there. Sometimes when I when I dye items, the stitches get dyed also. This is a good way to have to remove some of that color to have some contrast with the background with the lighter leather. It's not really a dark brown, it's a it's a brownish shade. This kind of brings it back a little bit. Alright, let's continue. Alright, so let's take a look at the French binding on this Golden Harvest one. Basically, it's a piece of thin leather. You've got to scab it very thin so it kind of folds over on itself. And it stitches on the edge. Stitches on the edge of that all the way around. Okay. Once it's stitched, you fold it over like this. That's what gives you that finished look. You guys see that? And then on top, once that's done, bring your lining in. You line it up like that. You stitch it, and then you cut the lining off. So once it gets done, man, it'll look really, really sharp. Because this is the this is where most of the time on these older older shoes, this is what deteriorates in the back. Because that's made out of basically just the fabric with a dye on top. And eventually, people don't use their shoehorns to wear it. Eventually, it breaks that down and it starts falling apart right there. Also, same with the heel counter. You got to use a shoehorn if you want that to last. Now we've got a piece inside here that reinforces that. The new heel counter. That should last for many years to come. Oh. I got a boo-boo on my thumb yesterday. Took a, took a nice chunk out. Of this part right here literally that piece is missing on the thumb so it's kind of slowing me down a little bit which i don't like i did it on my bell skyver like an idiot i was trying to clear something out of the blade when the machine was running i don't know what the hell i was thinking about maybe i wasn't thinking at all anyway it'll heal all right so let's continue All right, we've got our footbed in. I stitched the footbed together. I mean the gemming to the footbed. You see that stitch there? Right there. And now we're going to sew the store, um, split welt onto the shoe. Some of you are gonna ask me about my watch. <clears throat> this is a Polaris. I abuse the hell out of it. I've even got this, the, the face of it is scratched a little bit, if you guys can see it. Even the back of uh, the watch, I've broken the glass on it. 
I know. I abuse my watches. Whatever. They're meant to be worn. And things break, you can just fix them. Or you leave them. <laughs> now this is becoming a little tricky for me to do. You've got the um, thumbs a little damaged. <clears throat> It's taken a little longer to stitch on welts. And of course, I've got like three pairs to do with the 360 welt stitch like that all the way around. So, timing couldn't have been worse that, that this happened. But these are the Golden Harvest, by the way. We're chugging along, slowly but surely. We're getting there. So a lot of times when you have repair shops, cobblers, or whatever you want to call them, they re-welt it. When they come to the seam here, they like to butt the welt like that. I don't do it that way. I like to overlap it, skive the ends, and make it nice and smooth. Now, on a split welt, it becomes a little tricky because you've got the vertical and you got the horizontal pieces to be glued. You got to make sure you line those up. Now, here, what I've done is I've skived one end and I've skived the other end the opposite, and then simply put some glue on there, and we glue them together. This is a little bit more difficult to do than if it was a flat welt. But but still I like I like to do it this way. I think it gives it a much more refined look as you're looking at it from the side angle. And um, rather than a, a budding the two pieces together, because no, no matter how well you butt them, you're still gonna get you're still gonna get some sort of a gap. You know, that's you can tell where it was started, where it was finished. This way, it's not that it's, it's, almost, it's almost impossible to know where it was um, where it was stitched. But everybody does it differently, you know, to each his own. But I, I'd rather I'd rather have it this way rather than than butting it the two ends together. Finger's still sore, but I'm trying to work, try to work with it and make it work. It'll be all right. It's just that sometimes when you reach for something and you hit it, <laughs> uh, it's common. It's it's a thumb, you know. You use it. Oh my God, you have no idea how much of a th you um, how often you need that thumb when you're when you're just your normal day-to-day -day living. You're like trying to lace your shoes. <laughs> Good luck. Trying to button your buttons. Oh my God, it was a nightmare. The other day I had my button shirt on and the wife wasn't around. I mean, I was just, I started sweating because I couldn't button my damn buttons <laughs> because of the thumb. But you know, you just kind of, you kind of adapt and and you get used to it, you know, you have no choice. All right, this is the end, basically. Pull it through the inside. Do a couple of knots. And this pair is ready to go to the customer for a trial fit. And once it comes back, we'll assemble it. Hopefully my thumb would have healed by then. Not sure, but now I usually spray this with a little bit of water just to soften that up a little bit and hammer it flat.
right. She is ready to go for a test fit. Cool. All right, she's ready to go. All right, let's continue. All right, we're making progress. So all of them are at this stage except for this beauty here, which I'm still working on some details. So we've got all the shanks covered, cork, wealth issues taken care of. And now we're going to put basically the leather midsole on. Give it a nice structurally sound base to attach the leather soles to. I guess we can say it's a little hammer time. all set we'll cut it trim it we'll get the soles ready stain attach stitch heels oh my god i don't even want to think anymore there's a lot more to do all right let's continue all right the floor shimes floor shimes project is commencing pretty well now this is ready to go to the customer this is just a temporary heel so he can kind of put his foot in wiggle his toes make sure the sizing is okay and we are ready with these the black ones, we've got to do basically French binding on that. French binding on that and French binding on that. Still clean these two. So we're making progress, slowly but surely. Let's continue. All right, we are back. Now, it's been a while since I've uh, come back to this floor shine project because we had a bunch of details that we had to deal with send them back to the customer back and forth make sure everything fit now we're getting there my thumb has healed pretty well actually it's still a little sensitive and it's acting up a little bit i'm getting so i'm getting like um like um if i if i press too hard there it feels like it's like a shock i don't know what what the issue is maybe i cut some nerves or something now, we're getting ready to dye the soles. We're going to use Phoebing's dye. We've got Show Brown, Saddle Tan, Walnut, and Dark Brown. Basically, we're just going to start smearing the soles. There's no right, wrong way of doing it. Just do whatever the hell you want to do it. We're going to make some happy lines, happy marks. No mistakes here. All right, let's get started.
don't know what time it is. <clears throat> Damn it. I'm back. Now that black fabric I glued down is the anti-squeak. I lost the soul. I mean, it's a little bit overkill, but you know what? It's all good. I'd rather be, I'd rather be overkill than, than come back later and have an issue with one of my repairs. I mean, it happens sometimes. I'm not perfect. She is getting there, slowly but surely. I think this is my favorite one by far. This gets a little bit of a different stamp than the other ones. Okay. Beautiful, man. Wow. Look nice. You know what? This is my happy place. It really is. Just thought I'd let you know. I know they're just shoes, but it is what it is, my brother. It is what it is. Okay. It's pretty, it's pretty long sole. Barely fit, but it fits. No, I'm not gonna hit my thumb. I know that's what you were thinking. Hey man, watch it man, your thumb is in the way. Don't hit it. Are you crazy? It healed pretty quick, actually, like in about two weeks. I mean, there was a chunk missing out of that, that tip. It wouldn't stop bleeding. I couldn't put a, I couldn't wrap it up, put a Band-Aid on it. I couldn't find the tip or else I would have glued it back on there. <laughs> no, I wouldn't have. Although people do that. I'll use a little bit of crazy glue. If it's just a cut, maybe, but not a whole piece missing from it. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> All right. Oof. Tight fit. All right, let's continue.
Uh, sometimes when we have shoes um, that have a backed or caked polish or conditioners or whatever the customer chose to put on there, it's really hard to get into those little areas right there. You see those zigzag areas? So what I do is I get a steel brush, okay? And then go in there very gently. That removes all that caked in creams, polishes, whatever that is. Hey man, you can't use a wire brush on Shell Cordovan. You're gonna ruin them. I'm out of here. Take it easy, very gently. You're not gonna mess up the Shell Cordovan. You're not pushing it very hard. Just gently getting into those little areas that are caked up with whatever it's on there. There she goes. Now she's nice and clean. I'm sure there's other ways of doing it. This is just one way of doing it. So once I cleaned the black, it was pretty faded. I'm not sure if you guys can see it. So I added some black Phoebing's leather dye and dyed it and made it, give it a nice shell quarter, man. It's a solid leather. And um, with a little bit of, uh, with a little bit of work, you can bring it back. Black obviously is the easiest color, but you can even do it on here, let's see the color number eight. I've got one. This is being dyed. I dyed this one with Phoebe's red. So this will add a little bit of red to the to the color. A lot of people get scared of uh, of shell cordovan. But it can be done. We have round two in, uh, in coffee today. Chris! Oh! What you doing, man? Is it, is it coffee time? Coffee time. Is it beat up? What was, it, what was that sign? The Cobbler's Cafe. Cobbler's Cafe is on today. We'll be coming to you live in about 15, 10, 15 minutes. Chris surprised me today in the afternoon. He's usually here in the mornings. I guess you got nothing better to do, huh, Chris? <laughs> I don't feel like working today. Yeah. So you're here making me coffee. <laughs> Welcome to Cobbler's Coffee. Cobbler's, it should be Cobbler. I'm the only cobbler. Right. Chris is... Cobbler Cafe and Friend. Cobbler Cafe and Friend. Because he doesn't have any friends. Just got one friend. One, one friend, that's it. You know? <laughs> that's all I need. If you got friends like uh, Chris, if you got a friend like Chris, you don't need no more. That's it. Cobbler Cafe. But who the hell else is going to come and make you coffee, Chris? And friend. No one's going to make you, you coffee. Know? You don't have any friends. Who's going to make oh, you coffee? Well, that's good. So what do we what do we call this? Three <sighs> coffee? Yeah, you can call it Greek Today's coffee. Today's Greek coffee. Today Today's, we're having Greek coffee. Today we're having Greek coffee. I'm wearing the blue and white shirt to represent. <laughs> Why am I wearing this hat? It's cold outside. Ooh, it snowing yesterday a little bit. Yeah. It's, it, 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 it just flurried. flurried. Yeah. Nothing, uh, nothing crazy. We had a very mild winter this year. It's going to be like in the 60s, I think, this coming up. We might actually have a winter where we see no snow actually sticking to the ground for you know we haven't had much snow yeah the in the past last, what five years five years yeah i think we had one snow it was like maybe three four inches and then it seemed like it came down and it was beautiful in the grass and in the trees and then it kind of and melted gone. by next yeah, day melted and gone. gone so we've been very lucky compared to like with buffalo's getting hit well 
was I, I talked to uh, my friend up there, um, Brian, Soul Man of Buffalo, Brian Gabigan. What's up, Brian? How you doing, Brian? That's the shop's name, Soul Man. Um, S-O-L-E, correct? So Yeah, exactly, yeah. S-O-L-E. So it's a really cool shop he's got up there. It's in Buffalo. Look him up. So last time, you know, we were talking, and it was like, so they're on the, there's a line where, like, East Buffalo. Okay. They'll get 10 feet, and where he is, towards the west a little bit of Buffalo, right. they'll get, like, 3 feet. That hard he of a difference? Yeah, he says, like, always, always that side of the town it's something in, in, in the way the pattern is, huh. the weather pattern is. They always get clobbered on that side of town, and they don't get as much. That's I'm going, crazy. I'm going, three feet. Shit, that's a lot of feet, three man. That's a lot. <laughs> that's three feet to, to us is like, it's like 30 feet. It's like 30 know? feet. Three inches we, is like three We don't feet get right anything here. around here that much. No one knows how to drive in snow around here anyway. Oh, forget it. And the drizzles in there. They're putting their hazards on them. Right. Right <laughs> I'm like, what the hell are you doing? Slowing down. A soft flurry, a soft flurry. <laughs> <It breaks. laughs> oh, people wonder why there's accidents. Idiots on the road. Do 50, 50 mile an hour in the left lane. I think we have a law here, right? Or is it in the rural of Virginia? About staying in the left lane? Yeah, no, you're supposed to, like, left lane is for passing, passing only. Yeah, you don't usually you know? ride it. I mean, technically, that's what it's meant for. People are not really technically supposed to stay in it, but... <laughs> Technically, but they always yeah. do. Welcome to the driving in the in the DMV. Well, tell what DMV stands for. Well, Department of Motor Vehicles. <laughs> it's like a, it was it DC, Maryland, Virginia? Exactly. I hate I hate the acronym. It's I keep thinking of the Department of Motor Vehicles. We are at we are at the we are at North Northern Virginia is the tip. Basically, it's like a triangle almost, right? We are at the tip of it, which connects to Maryland to Washington D.C. So that's the tri-state area is what it's called, the DMV. DMV. So that's what it stands for. Because we got people not from around here, obviously. They're going to wonder what DMV stood for. Right. But DMV also stands for, you know, Division of Motor Vehicles. Vehicles right. Which is where you get all your licensing and your and all that stuff going on, right. you know. So Not to be confused with DMC from uh, Run DMC for <laughs> Devastating Mic Control. That's what it stands <laughs> for? That's what it stands for. I didn't know that. Devastating Mic Control. No. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah that's what, I thought well, it was like that's what they say in the rap. I thought it was his, it was his nickname or something. Uh, might be Daryl MC, but there's one of their raps has a DMC stands for devastating mic control. Today Chris, you're getting a hip hop lesson. You Chris, didn't even know that. Chris is a musician, by the way. He <laughs> plays the guitar. What else do you play? That's it. Just the guitar. A little bit of drums, but pretty much the guitar. Yeah, that's my. You should brought the, you should have brought your guitar to entertain oh, these people. Right. Sometime. Maybe that's what we'll do. We'll bring the guitar next yeah. time. Yeah. We'll, uh, Next time. Okay. We can do that. All right, Set up an amp. Uh, yeah, no, don't overdo <laughs> it. Well, actually, the, the guitar, well, not a, if you play an acoustic guitar or an electric acoustic. guitar. I would need acoustic. You know, acoustic is better. Yeah. I'll throw yeah. maybe like a flamenco tune to it. <clears throat> yeah, acoustic is better. We'll have Chris play, play for us. Though. Don't expect any singing from me or Steve, just just so you know. Wait a second. Well, I, do you speak. sing? I don't, well, I don't know. Well, I can, but that doesn't mean it's good. Actually, I was singing in my garage yesterday, oh, and I turned the turned the volume down. I go, maybe I shouldn't be singing. Oh. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'm just going to give you my favorite story. When I, I don't sing, but when I was living in New York City, I used to practice or try to practice, and I'd call my sister and uh, play a song over the phone. And uh, <laughs> I'd call, I'd say, hey, check it out. I've been practicing. I said, we'll say Journey for whatever. I've been practicing this Journey song, and uh, I'd play it. I'd hear silence on the phone. I'm like, what do you think? And she'd go, oh my God, who sings that song? And I'm like, oh, like Journey. She's like, yeah, let's keep it that way. Uh, <laughs> Damn. She's, she's, she's a ball buster. Man. I swear to God, man. She's always been like I that know, since man. she was young. <laughs> she hasn't changed a damn bit. I would, just, I would just hang up. Thanks, sis. All right, that's enough for the day. All right, it's enough. So we'll see you guys next time on the Cobblers. Cobbler. Cobbler and Friend. Cobbler Cafe. Cobbler and Friend Cafe. All right, take care. Cobbler and Friend.
All right, welcome back. We are done, finally, finally done with these projects. Now I still have to put the insoles inside the shoes, but once, they, once that gets done, they'll be ready to ship out. So this was a long project, right? It took me, I don't know, maybe about two months, I would say. Uh, there were some issues with, with sending customers uh, the shoes back to make sure it fit them before I could go ahead and finish. It wasn't issues, just wanted to make sure that the shoe would fit them halfway because they're all mail orders and I don't have anybody walking in to try on, make sure that it fits them, you know, when the work is being done. So it took me a little bit longer than anticipated. I ran out of some supplies. Uh, the brass small tacks, believe it or not, the bottom of the uh, bottom of the heels. Um, I guess, um, you know, I just couldn't find them and I ran out of the ones that I had and finally, uh, finally found some. And then by the time they came in, all these issues. So anyway, I'm so happy they're done. Now, I know it's a long video, right? It could have been longer. I mean, God, I could have gone on for another hour, but it was just, this is the shortest I could make it. You guys wanted the longer video. I gave it to you. All right, so thanks for joining me. I appreciate it. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Thumbs up. That helps to, you know, generate some uh, interest in the channel. And um, for those of you guys who have sent me items to get estimates, be patient. I'm getting to it. Uh, we have a couple of customers from overseas that sent me some floor times. Um, Albert, I haven't forgotten about you, my friend. Um, I will get back to you as soon as I can. A um, couple of other people too. Uh, Giorgio, um, I got, um, where was that sent in from? I think it was France. I'm not sure. So anyway, either way, I'll get to you guys as soon as I can. All right. If you have any questions, um, you can email me at bedos at yahoo.com. That's B-E-D-O-S at yahoo.com. All right. We'll see you guys again on the next project. Take care.